You might be a postgraduate student, a researcher, or a scholar. Your scholarship might involve discovery or integration or application, or perhaps you are engaged in the scholarship of teaching and learning. You might be developing new pedagogical models or using large data sets to investigate youth activism or the local food movement. Regardless of what you do, your work is important and it has the potential to change the world. You know this, so why are some of us tucking our scholarship away, hiding it from broader audiences or locking it up behind paywalls? Is there not a better way? We know some of the reasons academics don't reach for broader audiences. We don't have the time we are not trained for it, and writing for audiences other than colleagues is not valued. There is an increasing realization globally that research should make meaningful and positive contributions to society. But some of our traditions, like keeping our knowledge in inaccessible journals, constrains us. In recent years, though, we have seen a multitude of digital ways that academics use to share their scholarship. Many scholars today publish YouTube videos, write blog posts, and join Twitter chats. Is there an increasing desire, a yearning perhaps, to reach beyond the walls of the academy, to have greater impact on society? Perhaps this is what compels some scholars to employ the tools available to them and broaden the reach of their work. Perhaps scholarly tweeting and blogging are a symptom of how scholarship is already changing. One of the ways that my research team and I mobilize our research is by developing whiteboard animation videos, such as this one. These videos combine images, sound, and animation. They are short and tell a story. They are also freely available and explain research results in simple terms. We have helped others to create their own videos and we have learned a lot through this experience. Two important lessons we have learned are the following. First, we learned that translating research for broad consumption is difficult. Researchers are not trained on how to do this effectively. Proper training involves a multidisciplinary way of thinking about research dissemination. For example, in such training, we might need to help people understand storytelling and digital cultures. We likely need to help people understand the role that keywords, algorithms, and communities play in research mobilization. Second, in helping others, we learn that our colleagues are very excited to see their work come alive in this manner. Though they are passionate for the research, they may not be as passionate about its translation and dissemination. Many do not have the expertise or the time to create these videos. The web is a beautiful and scary place. It's a place of paradoxes and tensions, but it's part of our daily reality. We should get out a little bit more, but we should do so with recognition of the challenges that we and our colleagues may face online. Whether it's through whiteboard animations or through a different activity, those outside our research field will thank us.